Hi, I'm Kerry from Allen & Heath. I'm here in Plymouth at the Clockwork Audio Showroom. We've spent today showing a few engineers the iLive system and um, I thought I'd just take a little bit of time now to show you how to configure the iLive as a monitor and front of house dual system. What we're going to do is to set up a, an iLive R72 surface here as a stage monitor system together with a rack which in this case is an IDR32 and then we're going to add in an iLive T112 surface which is talking to another rack, the IDR16 and then we'll link them together with a digital mic split to give you separate front of house mixing and monitor mixing using a very compact system um, with a single cable mic split between the two racks. So to start off, if I show you the surface here, this is the iLive R72, very small compact rack mountable surface which even though it only has 12 faders, it in fact can control 72 different things, whether they're inputs, masters, DCAs or whatever. You've got eight faders here, four faders here, but six layers. So you can work your way through the layers for inputs, mixers, masters, or whatever you decide you want to configure onto the surface. This surface is simply controlling the mix rack over here with a Cat5 cable as the link between the two. This has control on it, network control, and also any audio that you might want to connect at the back of the surface. In this case, the audio will be connected at the rack because this is on stage together with, with the surface. So we have the mix rack down here with the stage sources plugged in. In this case, I'm using a 24 track for demo purposes, but these would be your microphones on stage. Over here, we plug in the outputs which go to the monitor mixers. In this case, I can assign these sockets here to be wedge outputs. So I've got six wedges, or seven, and an engineer's listen wedge, which is down here for demonstration purposes. And then I've got some in-ears configured over here. In this case, I've got six stereo in-ears and the stereo in-ear master or monitor for the, the engineer. If I use the bigger rack, for example, the IDR48, then I could have more inputs and more outputs and therefore be controlling more in-ear mixers or wedges on stage. So this is a, a very popular choice for a mix rack and small surface on stage as a compact monitor system. Now for the front of house system, I'd like to use the iLive T112 because this is a bigger surface, it has more faders, uh, therefore I can be mixing more things at the same time. Um, and that would be connected to another mix rack on stage. I could have done it by having two IDR32s and then using an analog split so I can have the mic split analog way and then plugged into the rack here and then plugged into this rack as well. But with the iLive you don't need to do that, we can simply use a digital link between the two. So what I'm going to do is to use a, another Cat5 cable which is going to come from port D, in this case an ACE card. I could choose to use MADI or either sound there if I wanted to. So it goes from the monitor mix rack to the ACE port, port B, on the front of house mix rack. And this is going to take the signals from the mic preamps, post the converters over a single Cat5 cable into this mix rack, which is the front of house rack. Now even though it's an IDR16, this can in fact process 64 input channels and in this case we, we could have up to 32 mic inputs digitally transmitted over the Cat5 cable into here therefore we could be processing 32 channels for front of house using the IDR16 mix rack. In fact all you need from here is the DSP brain and this is the reason why you need a second mix rack is because with the iLive the DSP is in the rack not in the surface the surface is simply a controller, so we have a monitor controller and a front of house control surface with the DSP being processed in here. Some people have asked whether you could have two surfaces to connect to one rack. For example, just have that one rack on stage and then have two surfaces connected on the network connections down here. Well, the answer is no, simply because this is just a controller, it has no DSP in it. And for monitor mixing and front of house mixing, you need separate DSP for the monitor channels and the front of house channels. And also you have one PFL bus, so you can't split the system and say you've got a monitor PFL and a front of house PFL. But the iLive solution is quite elegant and quite cost effective too, because even though you have a big mix on stage, and this could be a 64 channel mix down here, you need the smallest mix rack with a DSP brain in here. So this is actually a very cost effective solution. 
Okay, just to show you how we connect between the two, you have to first of all make sure you have a card fitted to port B. This is an option card. ACE is a very cost effective option. Um, other options include EtherSound and MADI, giving you further networking capability. In, in this case, you can have up to 64 channels of audio transporting in both directions between the two mix racks. So for the monitor desk, I need to first of all make sure that port B on the outputs page here. So in this case, I've got 1 to 24, where I could make it say 1 to, to 32 coming from that mix rack. And I'm now going to send that over ACE, the mix rack inputs themselves from card A slot 1 to card D slot 8. So this takes the output of the preamps post converter to port B 1 to 32. So that's all set up correctly. So that audio should now be coming into the front of house mix rack. I have to make sure that first of all, th this, because this is now taking its audio from the, the monitor mix rack, I have to make sure that the audio clock is synced to the monitor mix rack. So if I go to the mixer preferences page, audio sync, I need to make sure that it is synced to mix rack port B. So now that audio will be synced to there. I also need to make sure that the audio is actually coming from um, port B and I can do that once again from the mixer preferences page quick input source setup to make sure that inputs 1 to 32 are coming from remote port B and once I've selected that I can hit apply and then that will make sure that the audio is coming in correctly on the front of house desk. So this audio is not coming from sockets on the front of house mix rack, it's coming from the sockets on the, the monitor console mix rack. Okay, so both engineers now have the audio. The, the next question is, how is the gain shared between the two? Because you have one preamp, which is split two ways, and that preamp is an analog preamp with an analog gain control, and there's only one gain control to be had. So if I go back to the monitor desk, this control surface can see the preamp with this gain control. So if I selected a channel, went to the preamp page, I can see the gain over there. So I can tap the screen, I can adjust the gain, and I can switch the pad in and out as well. So that's the preamp control accessed from the monitor console. But I also have a trim, a digital trim, and this gives me a very wide range from minus 24 to plus 24. And once I've set up the the gain on the preamp to be roughly right, which I do during the sound check, I'll then leave that alone and then I'll do all the monitor mix gain adjustments using the digital trim. That means I won't be affecting the gain which is going to the front of house desk. At the front of house desk, if I then go into that channel there and go to the preamp page, you can see there's no preamp control at all because the, the preamp belongs to the monitor desk, but I do have a digital trim once again plus minus 24 dBs. So the front of house engineer does have his own control. The, the trim control, although it's in the screen there, is also presented to the preamp controls on the surface. So whereas on a monitor desk, if the monitor desk had a, a rotary gain control, uh, if it was a larger surface which had that, I'd then be able to control the gain there. On this desk I can control the trim using this control here. So this means that both the front of house engineer and the monster engineer have their own gain control using digital trim. Okay, well, that's shown how you can take two iLife systems and you can link them together using a digital uh, mic splitter using port B as the digital audio networking link between the two. Thank you very much, Kerry. Thank you.